All right, 10 LP sled head here. I got uh, a project that's been gifted to me by some good friends as a project. Um, we thought initially that it had a bad universal joint up front, but no, it was way worse than that. Um, get this light on. Uh, seems to be a common problem. This is a uh, Yamaha 250 1995 uh, Timberwolf. And uh, yes, the axle was completely, the differential was full of mud and it rusted and the bearings had fell apart and the, the ring and pinion were not splicing anymore. And uh, it created a huge mess. So um, it took me forever to get apart. The, uh, I actually had to cut the axle off because there was a shim and the nut and everything was, the nut came right off. It was loose actually. I think somebody had already been in here. But uh, this uh, axle wouldn't come out. So I literally took a sawzaw cutting disc and just worked my way through it to the point where, uh, and the axle is not light in this thing until uh, I got it off. And then the, the, the differential, it's not a differential. It actually is just a, uh, a spool. So it's really just a final drive. Um, I think that's what the manual calls it. So technically it's final drive and I'll call it that from now on. Um, so that came right apart, kind of, um, it came out anyway, um, there's two layers of bearings and seals from what I gathered by the manual and what I took out, two steps in there. Uh, the second one was what was rusted in place, you know, completely, the bearing was just completely molded to the, uh, to the axle to rust heat. So literally I'll be cut apart. This is just loose. Actually, I thought it was loose. Must have tightened it back up to make sure everything still fit right, and cleaned up. Um, so that 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 that's a real problem. I'll get into actually. Let me do it now. I'm uh, repairing the cracked rear cover there. Fix the light. All right. Uh, here's everything that's left that can be used. The connecting the drive shaft, um, the outer spline for the left side, the uh, housing for the differential, which I believe is still good. It's got a few nicks and scratches, but I'll be able to clean most of that up, um, file it and sand it, clean it, whatever, just to seal right here. I think the seal will still fit fine. Like I said, I'll take a file to it and clean the surfaces up. It's a relatively decent shape. I don't think uh, it's too bad. I can put it, I'm pretty sure I can put it back together. Um, it's still expensive. Getting a new one's $500. Getting all the new bearings and uh, ring and pinion, $500. So it kind of just depends. You know, I can go with what I know, replace all the bearings because there are axle bearings in here, wheel bearing, axle bearings, along with the pinion carrier bearings, and the, pin, the pinion bearing and the carrier bearings that are in there. So this thing is a pile of bearings inside, um, which is why they got to stay clean. You get mud in there, you're toast. Um, so here's the old pinion. As you can see, uh, yeah, it's just completely rounded off and pitted. And that has been frozen together as well. So there's, as you can see the bearing on there, that's all just frozen together. Uh, I tried pressing it off with an actual 20, 12 ton press and the parts came flying out, which was dangerous. And I just gave up because there was no reason. Um, here's the ring. The ring doesn't look too bad, but it, it's all of its points are rounded off its teeth. So it's, it's really not very serviceable. Um, it might've been a good way to get just, just the opinion and, and go with this ring, but um, I don't know. This isn't going to be right. Um, my, my, my experience in the automotive world is they need to be replaced together. So those parts should be on order. Uh, a new axle, the axle's over there. I've been using it. I had to actually use the axle to punch all the bearings out from the other side because they were so hardened in there. Um, so there's parts for that. Everything uh, in the back is, is on order. Um, the rear handbrake cable was missing. I'm replacing that and all the hardware. Um, let's see, the front brake cables, these these equivalent, these little ovals that uh, are part of the lever that they rotate to, to widen and close the uh, the brake shoes. Yeah, that uh, those are both frozen up front. Cables are frozen. You know, everything was just rusted, molded, and mold, muddied together. So that took a while to get them all apart, get them cleaned up. Then I got into 
here, and I can see that the bearing, the, the movement there isn't actually coming from the rod ends, which is unusual. It's actually coming from that pivot point. There's an actual pivot there, and there's a couple of bushings in there that looks like they'd never been greased, and they were just full of sand and mud, which turns into an abrasive, and where's the where are the brass bushings out? So those two, uh, they get two bushings on order. The rear cable, the equalizer up here was full of mud, and again, just like everything else, was rusted and corroded. So I took it apart, cleaned it. We actually have brakes now, but you pull the levers. Um, ordered another, this is the rear cable. Um, the headlight is missing, but it's got a pretty decent light bar on front, and it works. Um, that brake's been done. Both the front brakes have been done. The rears are missing the uh, rubber boots to protect the uh, axle nuts. Uh, and I th believe the uh, the neutral safety switch is starting is intermittent. You can see it flicker on and off, and sometimes it comes on, sometimes come off, in conjunction with moving the shifter slightly up and down. So either there's an adjustment or um, it's just starting to act up. So it needs to be replaced. I haven't looked at the manual. Just discovered that a moment ago. Um, what else? I got the took the carburetor part. It wouldn't idle, but it would rev fine. That led me to believe that there's probably something in the in the uh, the pilot jets. And I took it apart and cleaned it. And and let me see if it starts up. Watch make it a liar out of me. On on start. Okay, so it runs fine. It'll even pick up and idle right when it's uh, when it warms up. I'm not using the choke right now. It needs a choke lever. The choke actually works, and I just flooded it. So I mean, the the choke works. Everything works on the carburetor now. Um, it needs a boot around this uh, this deuce, uh, dust boot there, or mud boot. And I'm gonna guess by the, where all the mud ended up at. That is probably where most of the mud got in. So they need some new hose clamps and probably a new seal. But um, I'll take a better look at the seal and see if it needs replacing because it looks like it's pretty involved to get that off. Um, what else? The air box is intact. The gas tank is fine. Everything, all that stuff seems to work. The reverse works. The light, reverse light works. Like I said, the uh, neutral safety light is the neutral light. Uh, is intermittent everything else seems to work so it's going to take a you know a good chunk of money five or six hundred dollars to get it running but uh um you know um like i said it was gifted to me so it's definitely worth getting running the motor runs fine the engine runs fine motor engine um and i'm just going to kind of go over while i'm waiting for parts i'll kind of go over any cleaning fixing repair and a little stuff that doesn't actually need parts it just needs cleaning or fixing electrical problems whatever in uh, um, oh brake handles got ordered some brake handles and then of course the adjuster levels the ju the adjuster nut and screw for this side ordered some of those so it's kind of about it's about a hundred dollars in miscellaneous parts not counting the rear end the rear end all the bearings axle kits bearings axle everything is it cost about five hundred dollars so we'll say six hundred dollars to to get this thing back on the road but uh, it's you know it'll be easily worth twice that once everything's all fixed up I believe. Um, Let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Everything else seems to be fine on this thing. It's, uh, it runs amazingly well. It revs up. seems to make good power really quick. Um, and I think that's it. I wasn't going to originally do this. As I said, I probably should have taken videos when I was tearing it all apart. But it wasn't going real well. Um, and I didn't really think I was going to do this. But, uh, you know, with no snowmobile going on, I guess I will. It's something to do. Both the sleds are, are, when they were put up, were in tip-top shape. So there's not a whole lot to do with them in the off-season, including the uh, the old yellow one that uh, we rebuilt. It really tickled with that sled. I was going to sell it and decide that it runs too good and I like it too much, so I'm just going to keep it for a while. Uh, it's a good beginner sled and starter sled and uh, ditch banger just around the area. Um, saves the wear and tear on the, uh, on the more expensive sled. So anyway, we'll keep track uh, of this and uh, 
I haven't even I haven't even hosed it off. <laughs> I kind of wait till I, I wait till I get some of the parts back on it and everything, get it sealed up, and then I'll give it a really good washing. But uh, I, I think that uh, I think it's going to come out just fine. Everything you know, the everything works up front. Those brakes are actually adjusted right now. And probably a little loose, but uh, um, you know, I'll wait till I get a handle on it and I can actually feel how much tension there is on the brakes. Um, yeah, just disappointed I had to cut that axle up to get it apart. But, uh, you know, anybody has any good tips on how to rebuild that rear end? I mean, I've got the manual, and I've done many, many dozens of car differentials, limited slips and all, so it's probably not going to be that difficult. But uh, if you can give me any hints to keep it together, so, you know, keep the water out of it and stuff like that. But uh, the other thing that I've yet to learn is uh, why there's a brake switch. So I just kind of really ran across that because I was trying to make sure all the brake lights worked. I realized then I stumbled across the fact that there is no brake light. It's just a tail light. Um, and the, but there is a brake light switch just in the same place as there is on sleds. So not sure exactly. I, I guess it's some kind of safety feature that uh, uh, I saw a video that I didn't watch that said how to defeat it. Well, I know how to defeat switches like that. That's not hard to do. I'm just questioning why. So I got to look that up too. Um, shocks, springs, not sure. We'll get into that maybe. Uh, I have a feeling that's a can of worms, but hopefully they're they're in serviceable shape. And I'll know when I go to ride it. How bad, if one side's bad or the other, if they're really bad. But, uh, and and it, there's a mono on the back, which is actually a blessing. So um, let's see how it goes. Maybe we'll get this thing running in the next month or so, It'd be, you know, before fall, hopefully. Um, get some ripping into it. You know, give me something to ride around and play with until the snow comes. See you next time. Thanks for watching.